Knowledge is fun. Knowledge is cool. One knowledge with Nolan. Hi, I'm Nolan Winking. Back with another episode of Knowledge with Nolan. And today we're going to be exploring mind-blowingly large numbers. I love big numbers. It's just mind-blowing how far away the sun is. Or how many people there are on Earth. Or how old the Earth is. Or how many stars there are in the sky. But it's difficult to grasp how big numbers can actually be. So here's some examples to help you put it in perspective. To give you a concept of the difference between 1 million and 1 billion, 1 million seconds is 11 and a half days. That's a lot of seconds, but 1 billion seconds is 32 years! Wow! If you had 1 million pennies and you could stack them in a pile with none falling, they would stack a little more than half a mile tall and they'd be worth $10,000. But a billion pennies would stack 987 miles tall and would be worth $10 million. And this is pennies we're talking about here. If a million people stood up on each other's shoulders, they would be 994 miles tall. But a billion people standing up on each other's shoulders would be 1,010,101 miles tall. That's from Earth to the moon and back two times. Whoa. If you had a million grains of sand, it would be about one liter or a large water bottle. But one billion grains of sand is a truckload. It would be enough to fill a semi-truck full of sand. And think about how small a grain of sand is. That's crazy. I just love this topic. So the difference between 1 million and 1 billion is massive. But here's some numbers that'll make a billion seem minuscule. So 1 million is 1 followed by 6 zeros, and a billion is 1 followed by 9 zeros. But a trillion has 12 zeros. A quadrillion has 15 zeros. A quintillion has 18 zeros. A sextillion has 21 zeros. A septillion has 24 zeros. And remember, every time you add three zeros, you're multiplying the current number by 1,000. So an octillion is 27 zeros. A nonillion is 30 zeros. And a decillion is 33 zeros. But what's bigger yet? A Google. A Google is an incredibly large number. It's so big, to, it's hard to even imagine. A Google is one followed by 100 zeros. So here's a Google. One, zero, 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 zero. I'm just kidding. That would be way too many zeros to say in this episode. So when I hear the word Google, I immediately think of numbers. But most people think of the search engine. Fun fact. Uh, the company Google needed a name for their search engine, so they asked some higher-up university students for ideas. And one of the students suggested Google as a name because the search engine would have a Google of answers. But they actually spelled it like G-O-O-G-O-E instead of G-O-O-G-O-L, how the number is actually spelled. So now we know Google as how it's spelled now, which is pretty cool. And Google's headquarters is called the Googleplex. But they didn't come up with that name on their own. That's the name of an even bigger number. <laughs> Mathematician Edward Kastner and his nephew Milton named the Google number. But after that, they named the biggest number to ever be named. It's called the Googleplex. And Milton said you should have zeros until your hand got tired. But Edward wasn't happy with the idea, and, it should, and he said it should have a Google of zeros. So now a Googleplex is one, followed by a Google of zeros. So if you were to write out a Googleplex with 50 zeros per line and 50 lines per page in a 400-page book, you would need 10 to the 94th power of books. That's one followed by... 
owned by 94 zeros in books to write out a Googleplex. That is crazy! So one followed by 94 zeros isn't actually a named number because it isn't a multiple of three. So the closest number would be trigentillion, or one followed by 93 zeros because that is a multiple of three. It's just one zero less. So I think that we should name one followed by 94 zeros the Nolan Alien. I like it. And that brings us to the largest possible number of all, infinity. Infinity is not actually a finite number, meaning it can be the name of multiple unknown numbers. But numbers go on forever, and there's many things in math that humans simply don't know. Yet, until then, we'll keep learning about numbers. Knowledge is pretty fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.